Welcome to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Burchill. This is the next in my gel printing series. This time we're gel printing with leaves. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to select the option to be notified of upcoming videos as soon as I upload them. This video is also part of the hashtag LoveFallR 2017 collaboration by CAC Creative Arts Collaboration. Put in the hashtag and see lots of fall art. So the reason I am doing jelly printing with leaves is that we had a horrible windstorm here which ripped many branches off the trees and as I went to pick them up and I looked at these maple leaves I thought hmm got my gel plate out because I've been making these videos I'm going to go gel plate with these maple leaves. So I'm putting a coat of red paint down and I'm putting the leaves into the red paint. Sometimes I'm putting this the vein part down, sometimes I'm putting it up. You'll get a slightly different effect either way. Try it both ways and see what you like. It also might be different with different leaves. So it's all about playing and experimenting. Now I'm using that piece of paper to lift off the paint around the leaves and I'm going to come back to this piece of paper and keep layering. But you could have also used a colored sheet that you had just gel printed a solid color and then put that on and that would give you a different effect. So that looks nice, that print of red maple leaves. It looks quite nice. It's amazing the detail and the veining that you can still see. Now I left all those nice little bits. There was still lots of good stuff on there in the red and I've just added yellow. Quite often I'll go lighter or darker depending on the color. You want some contrast so you can pick it up. And I'm just pulling that off but you can see I've got the leaves in there with the yellow background and the red leaves. Now putting a coat of yellow paint and these leaves are just going back. Now those leaves still had paint on them. I didn't try to get that off, although stick with me, that's going to change in a bit. And you can put them however you want, layer them, get a variety of sizes. And there's the pull off sheet and I'm just pulling off more color. And every time I pull it off, I'm going to have the outline of the, an, a leaf in a different place. See how that red came off the leaves that the paint was there? That's just going to add more yumminess. So I'm putting this print right on top of the first print. And I'm just going to continue to build layers. So in this process, I don't actually end up getting a whole lot of prints, but I end up with some lovely tech layered prints. Now, because this is fall and because I absolutely love the fall and the colored colors of fall, I'm sticking with a palette that is very autumn-like. But you could use blues and greens or corals, any color scheme that you choose. You don't feel, don't feel you have to be limited to the colors that I'm using. Now I went with the leaves that just happened to have fallen and so there wasn't a whole lot of variety in sizes. If I was to go and deliberately pick leaves for a jelly printing, I would make sure I had various sizes and, and shapes. You could mix different kinds of leaves together if you so like. But I'm a big fan of the maple leaf. It has a lot of sentimental reasons feeling for me. And as you can see, there's still greebly bits on the plate. And I never, during this whole process, stop and clean the plate because I want that. Whether it comes up on the next pull or the next one after that or five pulls later, it's going to add interest. So here I decided that I'm going to take these leaves that are now really soaked in paint and press them into just a solid color gel print that's on this one that was orange. Now underneath this is my gel plate. I put a piece of paper because I'm going to pull off what's on there and the sponginess really allows me to get a good print. Later you'll see me doing this without being on the gel plate and I don't it didn't work as well. 
I pulled off everything and as you can see it's pretty clean this time. And that's because I left the paint on there for a bit longer and it just seems to suck up the paint. So I've added some metallics in here because no matter where I am and what season I'm doing something I want metallics. But you can see all the wonderful leaves. This is like one big giant pile of leaves. This is another gorgeous print in the making. And here you see me overlapping leaves. I thought, gee, I wonder what would happen if. And actually it gives a nice effect. So don't stop yourself. If you think, what would happen? Give it a try. Do it. You're going to find something amazing. And if not, it's just paper and paint. And you can see, even though it was yellow paint because there was red on the leaves, you see some of that show up. Here I'm pulling this onto a red background. A red gel print and that gives a slightly different effect so you could put it onto white and layer it layer a layer or start with a solid and then print on it or like I'm doing here which I'm basically stamping with the leaves there are you know numerous gel printing with lead videos and I've seen seen a lot and I'm hoping that you know, something in this video is going to be new to you, um, it's not, or maybe you'll get that light bulb moment and go, oh, that's what I should do. So now I decide I want to just use the gel plate pretty much as a stamp pad getting the gold paint on the leaf and then pressing it in onto the paper. Now the paper right now is right on top of my table. I would be have better luck if I had used my other gel plate. These are fortunate enough to have two or if you don't have two put something that's kind of spongy. You could put a mouse pad or you, there are silicone baking mats that are kind of spongy and that would work rather well for that too. Or just, you know, do as I'm doing, just straight onto the table. It works best if there's a, the paint is a little wetter or there's a little bit more paint on the gel plate. So if you're using the gel plate as a stamp pad, you may want to just put a smidge more paint. You can see the loveliness and the layers that are being built up here. The metallic paint is very transparent and it, you can see the color and the forms underneath. So it's giving a nice touch to the existing print. You can use fern leaves. You can use um, leaves from a Japanese maple, um, a ginkgo plant. I just would be very careful not to pick any leaves that are really thick or you know somewhat sharper because you don't want in any way shape or form to damage your gel plate. And I'm still pulling off with that same initial sheet, that first getting rid of the excess paint. But it's not wasting because what I'm going to end up with here is a gel print with tons of layers and interest. Now with the gel prints, some of them are going to be, you know, you could basically mat them and frame them and they become the art in of themselves. Some of them will become backgrounds for art journals or ATCs or ICADs or cards. Some will be used for collage material 
to make embellishments for your art journal pages and, and the like, or to do paper piecing. So there is no such thing as a bad gel print. It's just you kind of change, depending on what's on the paper, how you might use it. And you'd be surprised once you start cutting them up, especially using them for collage, how very usable pretty much everything is. Now once I do gel, a gel printing session, I just organize them by color. Whatever color it hits my brain, you know, it's major primarily blue or primarily green or whatever, and I put them in file folders arranged by color. And that's where they say till I go when I'm doing a project. If you're looking for projects to use gel prints and to see how I use some of my gel prints, I have an entire playlist that's all about gel printing and use it using gel prints. So go to that playlist and work your way down. I'm sure you're going to find something that is going to be right up your alley. You basically can use a gel print with anything that you would use scrapbook paper or any kind of colored paper. So as you can see, I'm just continuing to add layers, using the leaves as stamps to get the paint off of them. That's why I love gel printing so much. Nothing, absolutely nothing is it ends up being wasted. I got this deep burgundy color by mixing a blue and a red. And I just love that that combination it just it just hits my happy place so now that I have this kind of burgundy underneath I want to pull off that print so I'm putting as a background white so you're you want that contrast so you can see that print here I've chose white but you could use unbleached titanium you could use a beige or a gray you know play around and see what you know what works for you I absolutely love how that turned out. It's very different, kind of an unexpected tones. So here you see the red and the blue. And I'm using there just plain old cheap dollar store craft paint. You know, the other paints that you see me using, some are Liquitex Basic, some are Artist Loft. Um, it really doesn't matter. All of them work. You may have to adjust a little bit, use a little more, use a little less, depending on which ones you're using. So obviously right now I'm, up, I'm looking for something to put some marks on to this. I'm changing it up. And I grab, this is something that I cut with my silhouette. I cut out these leaves from watercolor paper or mixed media paper and I just had that there which I figured I could use as a stencil and I'm putting a sheet of bubble wrap on top to give that texture. So this is if you don't have leaves you can still use a leaf stencil of some sort. Now this is one I cut from Silhouette but you can purchase some and I'll put a link to those in the description box below. I tend to prefer you know the natural ones a little bit more um, because you can layer them up and, and get interest as opposed to this but if you played with the orientation on the silhouette and got a little creative with that um, you might get some interesting effects I would like to make actually a stencil with different size just maple leaves and see what I can do now I love that and I'm sorry that it doesn't really show very well on the camera but it's dark and then you can see the leaves in there. I know for a fact that's going to be make absolutely lovely collage paper, if not a lovely background for an art journal page. So you can use, here I'm using bubble wrap to add a little more texture to this, to these prints, but you can use anything. You can use the shelf liner that you've seen me doing. You can use, um, 
any of the things that I, I've already shown you in any of my other gel printing ones. So there you have like the background. It's, it's just a unique way. Now I could cut out those leaves as the way they are and use those. And I have something very unique that I could use as an embellishment. So not every plan works out exactly great here. I've used kind of a limey um, green and brown. Thinking that should be good. Eh, not exactly my favorite, but you know what? Again, I can cut out those leaves. I can further embellish them, stamp on them. Here I'm using some shelf liner to get some texture. You know, like you, it's paper and paint. And I'm putting this, I think, on a gold background just to see what happens. I think it would have been better if I would have liked it better with if I had left out the green and just gone the brown on the gold background. I think that would have been very striking. Thinking, okay, what color do I want to put now? And I decided to go with Naples yellow, which is kind of a softer, muted yellow. It's not as bright, and I really like it as, as a yellow for most of my applications, which is why it's almost empty. But using unbleached titanium or a beigey color would have been really great here, too. And I rather like the effect of that, the colors, the two tones. I can see that being an interesting background for an art journal page. So here are the prints that I've pulled in this session. With some variations. And like I said earlier, some of these will become collage materials, some will be backgrounds. Some I'm thinking about just actually just, you know, cutting them and putting them as a bat, as on a card or framing them as as they are. This one, I think, would be absolutely lovely framed. This one as well. And this one. So keep watching my videos. You may just see what I do with these. You may see them again. Thanks for watching. Here's the lovely colored leaves at the end of the gel printing session. They dry up quite a bit, so you really can't keep them long. But I know a friend of mine hung them from a stick and made kind of a mobile with them, and they, it was absolutely lovely. Enjoy the close-ups of the gel prints. I hope you give this a try, and if you do, please come and share them on in my Facebook group, All Things Mixed Media, Creative Katie. Come join the conversation. Until next time, see you.